Welcome to the Feminine Mistake Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Nicole, and today I'm joined by Hillary. Sarah. Sarah <laughs> is with us today. And we have actor, director, writer, model, and photographer <laughs> and supermom, Julie Jones Ivy. Hi. 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 Welcome. Hi, Julie. Welcome. Thank you. We're very excited to have you here. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. <laughs> I'm, it sounded sincere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, today's film, we're going to be talking about Steel Magnolias. Uh, the mm-hmm. What year was the? 1989. 1989. 1989. I was just a wee 10-year-old babe. I was just a 46-year-old spinster. Just a 46-year-old woman. I was woman. a wee one-year-old baby. Aww. And Julie's and like, well. she, Julie was like, <laughs> I was 55. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. <laughs> I'm only 19, you guys. Um, yeah, so we're doing Steam Magnolia is the, the, uh, the one that came out in the 80s. There was one that came out in the in 2012, which there we can was? talk about. Yeah, there was a all remake, black. Oh, all black remake. Okay. Um, I think it was shot in Atlanta. Because Kenny Leon directed it. Oh, God, I bet it's Tom, I watched a trailer. I actually watched a couple scenes from it. And Tom Key was in it. So I feel like it must have been shot in Atlanta. I think it was. I feel like I remember I those Queen breakdowns. Yeah. Yeah. Qu- Qu- Queen Latifah oh. played um, the, the Malin. The, no, she played the Malin, Malin? Ro- oh. role. Um, Kim Scott played the Truvy role. Um, and Felicia Rashad played uh, the Clarie role. And then Alfre Woodard played the Weeza role. Nice. I watched a couple clips oh, from it. it okay. I would watch it. I would watch it. I, it was kind of hard to get a sense of the whole thing from just the couple clips that I watched, but it definitely, like, they sort of, it definitely was unique to the strengths of those actresses. So it, was, it had a slightly different spin, which, you know, it should. Uh, you got yeah, different actually. people in those roles. And uh, yeah, so um, I was like, oh man, maybe we should have done, maybe we should have done this. Although it doesn't fall into our category of no. 20 years and older. Um, but yeah, so that was, that came out in 2012. We're of course talking about the 1989 version with Sally Field, uh, Julia Roberts, who this is our second Julia Roberts movie yeah. for this season. And I liked her a lot more in this one. I did too. Yeah. Yeah. I she was really awesome. She was super good in this one. I liked her less in this one. <laughs> really? I was going to say you looked like, like maybe you did. Yeah. Like just, I may, perhaps I like the character less. I get that. I get that. Maybe well, it was the accent. Pizza. Maybe it was the pizza. horrific. It was awful. Horrific Southern accent that she, as a dialect teacher, <laughs> Julie. It was a little strong when she's from Georgia. So mm-hmm. you know she's well, from Smyrna. Well, supposed to be a uh, Louisiana, Louisiana yes, accent. That's right. right. Nacogdoches. But no one in this movie had a Louisiana accent. No. Nobody was trying no. for no. Cajun. They were just like no. just generic Southern, and she was like way out there. And I feel like it was like a, a high schooler's version of a of a southern accent. She was like twenty one, maybe I think. I'm in, not quite sure. In the movie, because really? when she did Pretty Woman, she was like twenty three or something. I could be wrong. Oh, you're right. Pretty huh. Woman was after this, wasn't it? Yeah. She did oh, like wow. Mystic Pizza. Then she did this amazing movie called Satisfaction. I've never I don't know seen if that. You've seen that? It's Mm-mm. about a girl band from Washington D.C. or no, something like that. But that sounds Boston amazing. Or New York, and they have to leave the city because it they it's the, it's like the last summer before. Like it's like the summer after graduation, and Justine Bateman was the like, valedictorian. <gasps> I know what you're talking and about. They have a girl band, yes. and they go to the beach for the oh summer, God. and they're yes. a band at Liam Neeson's bar. We have to watch this movie <laughs> for this podcast. Absurd. I saw I'm this really movie when I was it. in the eighth grade, and I was just transfixed by Liam Neeson the, the whole movie. Oh my god! But it's amazing. Julia Roberts is the bassist. <gasps> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was before Still Magnolias. Okay. Like, so she was dating Liam Neeson. No, no. I'm, not, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not okay with that. She was dating Liam Neeson Isn't he from like that much movie. Older? Yes, much older totally. than her. Justine Bateman was his love interest in that movie. Of okay. course. Of course. So she, she had met him on that set. And I then she's got to be like 45 yeah, or something. And then she started dating Dylan McDermott. At, on from this, this movie, movie? Oh, my God. okay well anyway uh, sorry I got yeah we're, we're getting a little sidetracked because we, we do we, we, we'll, we'll get in this movie a sec, but so yeah sorry. so dill mcdermott is also in this movie um dolly parton dolly yes. parton shirley mcclain Sh- oh, shirley mcclain olympia dukakis oh, perfect. tom scarrett sam shepherd sam shepherd oh, yeah. yeah sam, sam shepherd so um Briefly. before we get into talking about the movie let's talk about everybody's experiences with the film prior to the podcast um hillary 
I have seen this movie before. Oh my God, really? I know. Are you sure that you're Um, thinking of this movie and not some other movie about a bunch of ladies at a hair shop? I am. I have seen this one and I've seen Evening Star. Uh, My mom. seen that. Oh God. Never heard of it. Um, Evening Star is like, it's similar. I think it's the same actresses. and like a Yeah. I want to say. What? Sally Field. No. Oh my God. Girl, you are mixing up Terms of Endearment. That's the one. Terms of Endearment. Evening Star is the sequel to Terms Terms of of Endearment. Endearment. Yeah. Ah. That's why there was not the scene that I was thinking of. You were in this waiting movie. for Shirley MacLaine mm-hmm. to ask her for yes. her medicine. I was. Yes. I totally was the whole time. And I was like, what Give is my daughter her movie? medicine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Different mm-hmm. movie. Different movie. That's why. Like, ah. When is Jeff Daniels mm. going to come in? Because I yeah. thought he was in. But I have seen this movie this before. Movie. Um, I have seen it before. This was one of the ones that my mom like made me watch as a kid. Of and course. like she like cried on the couch during. And I was like. That was a good movie. <laughs> and hugged you. Yeah. Like hugged me for a long time. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, get off me, mom. Yeah. And it was like 10 and like, okay. <laughs> that was sad. Can I go play now? <laughs> that was it. But yeah. Okay. So seen it before. Sarah? It's been a long time. Oh, sorry. Did you have, was there no, more that there? Was okay. It. That was it. That was it. Oops. Jesus Um. Christ. So I didn't see this movie until after I was in the play because we weren't allowed to watch the mo- 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 movie during so or you before. You were in this play. I was in this, this play before play. I saw. Yeah, it's, it's, it started out as a play. And I actually have a hot fact about it. Ooh, hot facts. Um. So the play was written by Robert Harling, who also mm-hmm. wrote the screenplay. And it's based on his re- real life experience of the death of his sister from complications from type 1 diabetes no when way. she had yeah. a kid. Okay. And her kidneys failed and it kill, killed her and this was a way for him to deal with his grief wow hmm. okay yeah okay wow that's he fuck- wrote it in 10 days that's fucking sad okay <laughs> was he a southern gentleman i don't know yeah they're know he's from natchitoches oh okay so this he's from new orleans yeah the okay the, the movie is set in the town that it's set in like it, it was filmed in the town it's set in which is natchitoches louisiana hmm which is, looks like Natch- Natchitoches. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it kind of does. It does. But I met a girl at summer camp. And she's like, no, it's Natchitoches. Okay, so Sarah was in the play. I played Clary. Okay. Okay. It was very fun to do. And um, yeah, you'll hear more about that throughout the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to hear a little bit about a little bit about Sarah's experience um, with being in the sh- in the play uh, throughout the or throughout the show. Um, okay, Julie. I had seen it maybe once or twice but i just don't remember when or who i was with i just don't really remember okay so did you see it like at the movies or did you watch it on tv or probably on tv or vhs oh good old vhs yeah yeah (laughs) but um are we uh watching it now was totally different because i'm a mom now and it was totally just totally different yeah (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. for sure crying 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 (laughs) Yeah, no, it definitely definitely has a different impact once you have kids. I guess I was so young that it, I just kind of just took it in and didn't really okay. think about it too much. Okay. There were things that I was like, I just didn't pick up on because I was a kid. Oh, you know? yeah, now, for sure. Now it's completely different oh, watching yeah. it as a grown woman. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, okay, uh, well, I have seen this movie a bunch of times. It was on all the time on TV when I was a kid. So I had seen it many, 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 many times. Uh, I remember thinking that it was sad, but like, I definitely feel like it has a different impact on me now as a parent, um, Mm -hmm. uh, than it did then. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to see if I can dredge up something more emotional about it. I just remember watching it a bunch of times. Uh, I think it was one of the few movies out there that had a whole, like mostly women in it. Um, so I think that was probably something of note to me. Um, yeah. But other than that, I don't think it was, it wasn't like, oh my God, Steel Magnolias is coming on. Everyone get out the popcorn. Like it wasn't like a movie that I was like super, you know, it was more like, oh, it's on again. I guess I'll watch it. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I remember watching it a bunch of times, but I don't quite remember why. Why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I only saw it a couple of times, but the lines from it yeah. were throughout mm-hmm. my entire childhood. Pink like, is my signature color. I wear yeah. a six, but a seven feels so good. I buy an eight. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Or like oh, and if you don't yes. have anything good to say, come sit <laughs> so, by me. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. That what I recognize. I mean, my my family yeah. constantly quoted it. You know about like my mom, my aunt, my grandma. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Cousins. Mm. There were some really, yeah. The lines are very. Uh, 
yeah there's some good ones yeah, yeah good i would ones definitely there. think there's some good some good ones okay so um so that was our experience with the film St- steel magnolias prior to the podcast so um let's get into talking about this movie you seem so distant let's just do it you look stupid and rich the house is a mess jack the kids are a mess jack you're a mess jack you have been a total bitch ever since you came to new york fascist all right Let's get into it. Okay, Steel Magnolias, uh, 1989. Uh, Sarah, do you have the information about who directed it and whatnot? Yes. Okay. Um, once again, it was based on a play okay. by Ro- Robert Harling. Okay. It did he directed- write the screenplay he also? Did. Okay. Yeah, he yes. did. Um, it was directed by Herbert Ross. Okay. And Herbert Ross also directed Footloose in 1984. Right. Huh. He was a choreographer, right? Like, I think I looked at him up earlier today and I saw that he had, prior to directing films, like he did, and during, directed lots of Broadway choreography. Oh, I didn't Some see of the that. direction in this film makes more sense now. <laughs> he also, this I did was, not oh, enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. The direction. So what else? What else did he direct? Since 1958, okay. he's dead now. Um, but oh, um, God he, rest his soul. He directed until the last six year, years of his life. So he directed. Oh, okay. His whole career. So he was like just in the director's chair till mm-hmm. the bitter end. Yes. This was the That'll first movie he made after the death of his wife. It said that. On oh, the extra oh, really? On the DVD. Oh my gosh! It oh, got man. him back into wow. Like, living oh, so I maybe it was a therapeutic I yeah god <laughs> you hillary should. you're a fucking you asshole feel awful <laughs> also the playwright he's gonna haunt the you pastor who performs shelby's wedding oh. and funeral oh i didn't mm. I, that makes sense it would be the same person but i didn't realize yeah. that that was the case yeah. also spoiler alert movie. shelby dies <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> they okay. i okay. in the <laughs> extra <laughs> thing it I'm said that the um doctors and nurses who cared for joy roberts character were mm-hmm. the same ones who cared for shelby like they asked them to come back and do this on the sh- movie Wait, 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 wait. wait. They're like real doctors and nurses. Yeah, they cared for, oh. for Susan. Her, 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 her real name was yeah. Sue. Her, her oh. character yeah. Susan. Yes, I did notice that they were not actors. That was apparent to me. Oh, <laughs> I just noticed there were a wouldn't. lot of scenes in silence when they were around. And I was <laughs> Don't like, give them any lines. <laughs> interesting anyway, choice. Sorry. Grief is a bitch, man. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. That's horrible. So this was like a big, a lot of therapy for a lot of people. So yeah. there was a lot of. I mean, I do feel, I do feel like there's a lot of emotion in this movie. Like, I think that's definitely present, yeah, um, in on in a lot of levels. And they don't like, like they treat it as a very dramatic moment. Whenever there's a moment of emotion, there's like a like a close, like a big push in, and it's very like you know they're really focusing on those moments of intense emotion. So I can kind of see how everyone on set was maybe this was therapeutic for them. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, that's fucking sad. Um, Sorry, guys. No, that's that's Comedy real shit. Podcast. That's some real shit. Um, okay, so all right, uh, I guess let's get on. It. Let's get into talking about this movie. So I didn't, even though I've seen this movie a bunch of times, I did not realize until Sarah told me that this was how the play was structured that each sort of chunk of time in the movie is a different season. Yeah. I hadn't really mm-hmm. picked up on that. So it seems to me like this first opening of the movie is in the springtime it's easter in the in the yeah. begin in the yeah. it's mm-hmm. easter yeah, it, the it easter is eggs. they have the easter egg hunt she's got a big easter decoration right. on the front door it's easter sunday the that's first right all those the first day. i don't know why she's getting married on easter sunday that seems mm-hmm. strange like a strange but okay um mm-hmm. now one thing i noticed as soon as the movie opened were those big uh, like what i consider to be just emblematic of the south which is are those huge trees like sort of covering the road as anel is walking up i thought it was pretty interesting i liked how they they started the movie and this had us follow an ellen and like mm-hmm. introduce us to yeah, this world right. instead yeah. of telling us about it they yeah. just showed us like right. i thought it was kind of neat to let that thread of her you know her coming in and experience this new yeah and we get territory. introduced to all these people yeah, yeah i, I that think was that was cool. a, yeah. that was a good way to enter the story so they all go over to truvies to get their hair done and this is where we get the big diabetes scene right Mm-hmm. We've we been introduced to the <laughs> fact that Anel is not sure if she's mar- married. Oh yeah, that happens after not the yet. hair okay. scene. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, but yes, we we do need to talk about this. So there's some suspicion, some some gray area around her husband. We, we, anyway, uh, Truby and I think Clary are gossiping about it in the in the thing. But yeah, so uh, Anel and no, yeah. 
Well, we Malin, were, I can't keep track of all okay. these names. Anel is Daryl Hannah. <sighs> Malin is... Um, I'm exhausted. Sally Field. Sally Field. Okay, Sally Field, yes. Oh, no, I was going to say, you said he climbed in her window. Del- and yeah, she Del- was Del- like, Del- I don't... You know, he's like, I don't... Are you going to marry me or not? And it's, and then he's like, I'll make you happy. And she's like, we'll see. we'll see. That's what made me so nervous. Like, I feel like the beginning of this movie told, like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I wonder if their relationship was happy. Because later on, because I don't, I'll yeah, say it there's more later. later on, my, yeah. I was like, Ugh. Yeah, there were moments what? throughout it where like I wasn't sure if anyone in this movie was in a happy relationship. I too. And like I see that. I, I wonder, well, I feel like Malin and her husband seem to have a oh, pretty regular were marriage. They? There were like comments throughout it, um, like especially from Julia Roberts' character from uh, Shelby, like well, I wanted to tell you and daddy together, but you're never together anymore. Oh, and like, that's a good point. There were all those point. little things yeah. like where she's hollering at him outside and she's like, don't like, drum, come on, you never listen to me. Stop it. And like, he's he's not listening. Well, you and, know, like, I maybe it's too early to call this, but as the more you guys are talking about, the more I'm starting to wonder if this is a movie about how female relationships yep. are true and solid mm-hmm. and emotional and the relationships you have with men are just kind of that's yeah. exactly circumstantial what I got out of this movie. Interesting. Well, and, then, and then like she acted like the baby would like solve their problems. That's right. What she, yeah. What she says would, later on. It would help oh. things. It would help. Them. Oh, yeah. 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 wow. We that's really fascinating. Yeah. There's a whole nother layer to this movie that I didn't anyway, even see. Jump but, ahead. No, no that's a lot fascinating. In this that like, cause also like Spud and Truvy, they're never together. Like she yells at him in the beginning and like he leaves. Well, he's, but he's very never, closed off emotionally, but he never comes to any events with her until mm-hmm. the very end. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's, I think, Men the are just like time. a floating thing in your life. Right. Like, Sammy was pretty steadfast. I liked him. Scary. Okay, let's anyway, wait. I want to, well, let's get, ahead. yeah, Sorry. let's hold on to, let's hold on to him because <laughs> I definitely so, want to talk like, about him. You know, I think that the female friendships yeah. and those relationships were the ones that were the most true and the most honest and, and like, mattered. And the when ones you that need, mattered. When you need at someone the end. to be there. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that was what this movie sort of showed us. Was okay. That, I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. Um, so End of podcast and we're done. <laughs> um, so, uh, we are in the hair salon. This is when we find out, uh, cause they're, they're chit chatting. Um, there's a, a, a shot that made Sarah and I laugh a lot where they were like doing Julie Roberts hair and then they cut they away and they come back around. and she's and wearing she's this like wig, <laughs> yes. the wig, a fully just done a hair, huge just wig. huge wig. <laughs> and we're like, Oh, um, and uh, during the scene where, so they're get the, there's mom and daughter bickering, which happens a lot in these, these yeah. movies. And uh, then suddenly Shelby goes into this kind of like trance. Almost. Yeah, this yeah. like trance almost. And she's going into diabetic shock and they're having to give her. There's this th- very, I think, iconic scene where Sally Field's giving her the, trying to make her drink the juice and she doesn't want yeah. the juice and she's pushing it away. Yeah, because she wants the candy in her purse. Right. Yeah. But... And the independence, yeah, of not being told what to do. You know, she's yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah. I have candy in my purse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were saying, sir? Oh, sorry. This this was the line, um, Cla- Clary's line. I'll get the juice. That like, yeah. This yeah. was like whatever everyone like I- I- imitated me, like walking off stage. I'll get the juice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so she goes into sho- diabetic, sort of a diabetic shock kind of thing. They yeah. give her the juice. Yeah. This is when we find out. I feel like her mom maybe didn't need to share this t- in front of everyone. No, uh, no, seemed I don't Seemed a little private, so. but seemed she like yeah. she Not says true. that that they the doctor says that they can't that she can't have children. Yeah, and this was why they may have been considering calling off the wedding. Yes, which seems like a it's a big thing to drop. Well, they're in all, the middle of the beauty all poem. of them except for Anel are close. But well, still, if my mom said that, w- like I feel like that would have been my thing to tell people. Like if my mom yeah. had said it, you know, I I would have, you know, I would have been upset about that. But there were a lot of things that the parents spilled in this that I would have been really upset about. Yeah, they, there seem to be no boundaries here yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, moms will tell people's business for but, sure. Yeah, like, I, guess so. I, yeah. I do think that's a southern thing too. I mean yeah. like my grandma very much does this. Like if you tell my grandma something in confidence like it, then I get a call from my dad that's like well why did you tell grandma that? And I'm like well it was just supposed to be for grandma's ears. That's why I told grandma that. Yeah. And it's like I, I feel like older southern women it is just a thing like especially when you're around like your chosen family and your friends that mm-hmm. 
like uh, you, you like sort of keeping don't a secret in on your life, means you know? something. Uh, it's the, <laughs> the opposite for me. Like my, 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 my mom won't tell a soul a thing. And my dad like tells embarrassing childhood stories of, of me at work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Then then we find out that Anel's husband is on the run and he's taken their money and then she she's now moved to yeah. this town to get a new job and it's going to start over. They feel so so they feel kind of they feel bad for her so they mm-hmm. invite her to the wedding and then we get into the wedding. Well and Shelby loans her dress too. Right, she'll even have her dress. dress. That's right. And we get the big wedding with all the pink. The, there's yeah. a line in, from the play that's also in the movie that's the line about Pepto Bismol. Um, yeah. And it, that is true. Like the um, the church does look like it's covered in pepto it was bismol. Overwhelming in its pinkness. And I I did want to call attention to one of the last lines that we get right before the wedding, which is from Weeza, and it's. Hmm. Sorry, I'm tapping. Um, it, one of the last lines that we get before the wedding is from Weeza, and it's "Men are the most horrible creatures." And right about her. her. Oh, yeah, about we didn't even talk about Weeza. Like, yeah, like she gets she in, okay. Yeah, in, like, yeah, yeah. In the beauty shop, but right. That's one of the last things. And we she's hear got from. the dog, and she's blaming Tom Skerritt for. Yeah, she uh, blames Drum for riling him up, for riling the dogs yeah, up I didn't with like the gunshots. That, even as a kid, I hate, I did not like their relationship. Yeah. It yeah. Was oh, weird. okay. Well, tell us not. more about that. Oh no, I just thought it was so rude. They were yeah. just so rude, or he was just they so were rude weird to each to other. Her, or, and I just yeah. didn't, even as a yeah. kid, I thought that's just weird. But now I can see it differently a little bit. But well, like, no, I felt like he was really rude to her, and she tried really hard to not be rude back yeah. all the time. You know, like mm, there are moments where she like walks up behind him and she like taps him on the back, or she like mentions oh, at like the funeral, I sm- yeah. yeah, and like I smiled at him in the grocery store before I could even think <laughs> I a second love thought. That part, yeah, and like <gasps> she, I think, tries really hard to make Drum like her, and Drum like antagonizes her dog and like treats her like. Crap. Yeah, like, I think it was meant to be a sort of like we like h- hate like each other, but it but seemed like he was mostly him, being a like dick. Yeah. yeah, from yeah. all the women, it felt like that. Like we hate like each other. You know, all of the women were like that, especially Clary and uh, mm-hmm. what's her name? We Weeza. Well, Weeza is the rich lady in town who, uh, yeah. God forbid, you be an independent woman. I know, right? Because everybody assumes you're just the old bitchy hag which is exactly yeah. the box that they put and her I in and that's why her i would with be the her. silver hair i really yeah. did yeah even better she looked than her gorgeous. like red hair mm-hmm. later on in the extras of the dvd it was like all oh. in her face and like very straight but in the movie it's like this really yeah. cool yeah, like really gorgeous hair and, natural, and i thought that looked so yeah. pretty on her it looks you know? really good she but redheads don't gray they okay <laughs> <laughs> she and Olympia Dukakis are her fucking treasures in this movie. Oh, yeah, they so really are. I just adore I them. I had just noticed on, on, on wa- wa- watching this this time, and I didn't notice it when I was in high school in the play, but Weezer and Clary are like, they both had a lot of heartbreak in their lives. They both had s- mm-hmm. spouses die, mm-hmm. and yet they re- 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 reacted to that in a completely different way. Like, Clary okay. is mm-hmm. very like positive and mm-hmm. sweet and Weezer just is like a, an old coot. But did Weezer <laughs> yeah. have her husband's die or did they divorce? One of them died. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought okay. for some reason I thought that they, it was divorce. No. I thought they were both divorced Mm-mm. for some reason. One, okay. one of them definitely died. Okay. Yeah, no, she seems like maybe some of her experiences in the world have hardened her a little bit. But I also think people like mm-hmm. really seem to give her a hard time. At least that's the way it seems to me. Like yeah. maybe it's part of like but maybe they give her a hard strategy. time because she is angry hmm. you know yeah or a little bit different and super independent yeah she's super independent which i'm all about yeah but i guess clary is super independent too or at least she is now her husband she recently is, died right she is now but like i think she's always been that way okay. you know like i feel like you don't have your husband die and then all of, all of a sudden you're like i'm gonna buy a radio station you know yeah, like, i guess that's true you're not yeah. like and her husband like, was the mayor up. right her husband was the mayor i think that's no 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 I, it was someone else who she was talking about the mayor's wife at the wedding no later no on. i read in on uh, in the synopsis that her husband was the mayor and that's why she oh, is a, has and all this money. and maybe that's, okay, because there was a line at the wedding where they were like, they said some, one of the women walks past while they're having cake and is like, oh, calories. And then yeah. they were like, calories, oh, calories. calories. And they were like, we hate her. She's yeah. the wife of the current mayor. <laughs> right. And I so think, maybe that's and I think, why. Yeah, okay, I think they were like, sense. you are much better okay, when you were the wife. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So we're at the wedding. Um, can we talk about 
the armadillo cake? Like, I feel like we have <laughs> yeah. to talk like, about yeah. the armadillo cake. My husband cake. said that when that. he lives in Texas, like, because he watched it with yeah. me the other night, he was like, that was like the huge fad to have that Real, back Because in of the movie? I think so, yeah. Oh, he was out there when he was probably something. in like sixth, seventh grade, which would have been like after this, you know? Yeah. And uh, he's like, that was like the thing to do. Because, you know, armadillos are... You know, everywhere well now yeah. they're up here but back then it was i guess just down there you know and, exactly and that was just like the most hilarious thing to do it was like a gag cake people loved it yeah, <laughs> is it weird that i th- thought it looked delicious i thought it looked so good I but like i would just cut off the I, tail I, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's like ass. i always love a good piece of ass <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although there was so much fondant on that cake. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, too much. I don't like too the fondant. Much fondant. But that velvet, ca- red velvet cake, it I don't know if awesome. it was real Good. or uh, like a like foam. I wonder if it was just red styrofoam. <laughs> but it looked moist and delectable. It looked so good. And then Melinda was like, this horrible woman makes it. And then she's like her she family so nice. after the wedding. Yeah, she was so <laughs> nice. She was so nice. Yeah, she was. Anyway. <laughs> she seemed very like sort of i can make everything but a snake because i don't have the can yeah she was, <laughs> she like, she it was, was so funny. cute i loved that woman um so at the party anel meets the bartender um sam After filling her purse with a bunch of food who which which is exactly what i would have done <laughs> I mean, at a wedding yeah, you know, yeah. That like, dress, she had to keep like she keeps know, pulling it up yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why strapless dresses are terrible They're so <laughs> um Sam, Sammy, the bartender guy, he is obviously a murderer. He looks like a serial killer. Oh my god, killer. that's what that's a murderer. Um, actually, I like to refer to him as Undead Elvis. He <laughs> does look like a vampire. Yes. <laughs> It's his his eyes. eyes were disturbing. His, his eyes were like, teeth he had too. an eyeliner it's on or something. Teeth. Yeah. Oh yeah, his yeah, teeth his were teeth. very yeah, vampiric. They were a little bit like, different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Were those his real teeth? Like, I don't know. I mean, did they I, put fake teeth in. Like I, they were. No, they were like, horrible. we need to make and him if they more did, creepy. That would make me so angry. <laughs> he just like had these weird pale blue eyes and such a dark complexion. Otherwise, like he was like had like dark black and he hair like, and immediately like, latched onto her. So creepy. This is the like, best cherry coke in the entire world. I was like, girl. <gasps> and when he made You have made, bad taste in men, clearly. It was, yeah. it was another continuity thing where, like, he was like, he sprayed the nozzle and it was like clear. clear and yeah. then he handed it to her and it was like a bright coke. red. <laughs> and then she took a drink and it was like brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, like, <laughs> I noticed that too. Because he's a vampire, so. Yeah. <laughs> he was, was glamoring too, her. <laughs> he was glamoring her to think it was coke. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't f- care for that guy at all. Yeah. And I, I really no. was concerned about her safety. I'm and like, glad that she too. did not accept a ride and home I kept from him. not caring about him throughout. I, did I too. liked I'm him. This, I didn't mind him. Really? I don't know why. I just was like, mm, they're both weird in their own way. <laughs> I they didn't are. think about him You're too right. much when I was a kid. But when I, at the moment he came on he, screen, he Sarah and I, I were like, like, oh, God. I was like, <laughs> You're like a murderer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> that guy <laughs> has bodies in his crawl space for sure. Right? He was way too creepy. There's a bunch of women with cat eye glasses just stacked up <laughs> just in his stacked basement. Stacked up in his basement. <laughs> well, she denies his, uh, you know, offer. Yeah, she doesn't. To she give doesn't, a ride doesn't, home. doesn't. Good. Doesn't, uh, Smart girl. Yeah. Stay sexy. Don't get murdered. Don't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Um, so they get married. They drive off into the sunset. And I guess this well, takes after us. After being pelted in the face with rice. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a was savage like, rice belt. They have that so little moment, you know, the two of them before she goes out there when she's yeah, getting the mom, right. yeah, oh, with the, yeah. yeah, with the little like corsage, and she's like, oh, corsages are stupid, aren't they? But she like asks her mom for help. I thought that was really sweet. And does I know Jack- she's just like Jackson. I swear to God, to if you- you. <laughs> Is, does Jackson do anything? productive or positive in this like does he do anything at all to first stand there and look pretty i'm just asking the question no no but he really did not much else was required of him I he guess. was a lawyer down in shreveport okay and he, he... gave a big house mm-hmm. but she did keep her nursing job you know she was yeah, still a yeah nurse. so apparently nurse. his lawyer lawyering wasn't that i mean she's taking she's taking care of a baby and doing the night well, shift at the she nursing said she ho- didn't at the hospital. want to quit her job though like yeah. very early on in the movie she was like i'm she was like no i'm not gonna leave my job when i have a baby and her mom was like we disagree with that she needs to be at home with the baby and she's like no i'm not gonna i mean i respect life. that i respect that if you you know yeah. you want your care about your career but like it seems like i don't she's like the only one i ever saw taking care of that baby <laughs> Just Except for the Men don't woman know how to hold the cake. <laughs> I just don't have the hip girth to oh, hold them. God, it's like not a thing that can happen. Oh, and oh, boy, sorry, and I'm no. just—it's going to jump ahead. I don't know. No, if no, no. Um, sure, why not? Oh, it just pissed me off when they had to go. 
she's going to get her hair cut. Mm-hmm. And she's like, let me just go tell Jackson. And then next thing you know, the baby's with them. The baby's the, with them at the, 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 oh, the hair salon. So I was true. like, what? He couldn't even watch the baby for the haircut? He is, <laughs> I didn't he's pick up on that. I'm pretty pissed pissed I feel like he's basically useless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he not? Yeah. He's no, just, I definitely he think does he's nothing. <laughs> like, he just donates his sperm. Like, all you got to do is not get that <laughs> woman pregnant. <laughs> That's your one job. Don't get the woman pregnant. Yeah, can't and even do he, it. He can't even do and that. She's like, we'll even adopt. Will we might even buy one. We'll buy one. And then you, she's you, like, you guys are not gonna let anybody like me adopt a baby. And you got a giant house. You can buy a baby. I mean, look. I mean, I I know that don't adoption is different. No, no, no I know it. adoption is babies. not an easy process. Like, and I know yeah. it's very costly. But it seems like maybe wait a couple more months and see how it shakes out. I mean, what they were married for? What like. I mean, it was like five not months. Even the next season or whatever. It was, well, no, you know, it was like, December. It yeah. Was okay. So let's Christmas. get into Christmas. Sorry, We're yeah. there. No, yeah. this is good. <laughs> let's get into Christmas. Oh. So, which, by the way, I should point out that we had been wanting to do a Christmas film for this episode since ha- Happy Holidays, guys. It is December when you're listening to this, Ooh. and. We had selected something, but we changed our mind, and we we're like, "Let's do uh, Steel Magnolias." And then it turns out we accidentally selected a Christmas movie. It's a whole big Christmas. There's a no whole way. big Christmas there scene. Big Christmas. Very Easter big movie. Christmas. And a Halloween movie. Okay, well that's <laughs> but but, but 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 let's focus on the Christmassy aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. And how Sarah, you know, how it just kind of worked out that way. I love how Anel is just. Like a sponge for wherever she goes. Exactly. And I was like, she is turning into Dolly Parton right here. Which I I thought was very funny. Yeah, for the Christmas part. Yeah, she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so she's kind of transformed into a mini Truvy. Yeah. Um, and she's got the hair. And she looked like Daryl Hannah to me at that point. I'm like, yeah, she did. Daryl Hannah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, so Shelby's gone. I guess they moved to Shreveport or something. I don't know. They They moved off somewhere, Mm -hmm. and she's back for the holidays. And it's. that, crawfish there, festival. well there is that what it is a crawfish but there's like christmas lights everywhere and santas and everybody's wearing fucking christmas sweaters and like i yeah. look i when we're recording this listeners it's not even thanksgiving yet okay and i don't like dealing with christmas before thanksgiving like it's like i no. i don't like it but i did get the christmas feels while watching the scene it was like the decorations yeah. and the the it party. was very yeah i thought it, and the trees and the christmas trees and i thought it was very festive i enjoyed that scene a lot i agree i like that they're just serving shrimp and like they're it's like in louisiana so they're just, just serving a shrimp in a cup yeah and so they're just like <laughs> it's christmas better Merry, break out my jean jacket <laughs> merry christmas here's your cup of shrimp i know and she's like, and then the crawfish is like the heads are already taken off and everything <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> Oh, I do want some like good. I want a crawfish boil right now, though. Like right now, right now, right the second. Like, like right we now, can cover this table in. Like, I imagine that would create all of kinds of mouth sounds that would not be oh my conducive to. Oh my so goodness! Good. <laughs> like a little like. like when I so it out. Uh, <laughs> there's big festival. Um, uh, then we get to the scene where Melinda is baking something. Yes. Uh, Christmas. Something with a lot of eggs in it. Like a so many, like an eggs. entire carton of eggs. Like she might as well have just been making like a twelve egg omelet. They were like continuity's going to be terrible. Just break. But eggs. she was about <laughs> to put. Sh- she put the sugar in there, so I imagine she was creaming the. I know it was eggs. a lot of eggs. Yeah, she broke like eight eggs in that pan. So this is when we find out that okay. So let's say they got married. Easter's in April, right? So Sometimes, yeah, March yeah. or April, yeah. and. It's December now. How many months is that? That's less than a year, right? Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, like eight, eight months. months. Eight months and Shelby's pregnant. Yep. She's two months pregnant. So she's due in July. look, I adoption is no joke. Eight like months. it is it is difficult. It is a struggle. It is uh, tough when when people, you know, you're looking, you want to start a family. But yeah. like, I feel like if you're if you could die, if you get pregnant, maybe you want to wait a little longer than six months. Yeah, maybe I'm just throwing you it know, out there. Like, some death. people know what they want too, yeah. though, and like, are willing like to death. Like, like, but dreams. but imagine you, Nicole. Yeah, like you, you wanted to have kids a lot, right? Yeah, but I also want to be alive when they grow up. I'm just saying. Like, it seemed very foolish, and and I had di- like I had difficulty not completely siding with her mother on this. Like, it seemed foolish and reckless, and selfish, and frankly made me hate jackson honestly oh, yeah. because like you know I-, I feel like he must have been putting some kind of pressure on her 
And I know she really wanted to have a baby, but like you could die, like you could know, die. The, and she did die. The urge to have kids overrides the urge to be alive, though. But when there are so many children out there who like, I mean, they could have need a family. Kids. Yeah. When yeah, there are so many know. children out there who need a family, like and, and like you like, I think it's 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 not just, you know, birthing the child like you want to you have to be there and like if you know that you might your your life might end because your body can't have children you know like it, that that's what is that I mean look I don't want to sound like a jerk who's like blaming her for her own death but it just seemed like I was totally in agreement with her mother oh, like yeah. the, the doctor said <laughs> don't have children you could die and the first thing she does after getting married is going getting pregnant it seemed very foolish to me well i mean this is the the reason why cu- couples spend tens of thousands of dollars on ivf instead of just adopting it like yeah. people want to have their own kids right but those people aren't going to die if they have I'm children telling you if you re- really want to have kids you don't care about right that. i mean that's why certain people have surrogates as well like if they're not healthy enough and like that yeah, just like, wasn't an know, option at this point yeah i don't, point. Thing in yeah. I don't think no they had surrogates back then they oh, did yes cool. they did okay they did People had surrogates. I mean, then that's what she should have done. And then I'm that's her fucking fault. If, but if there had been like a longer stretch of time and they had really, really tried, like I can understand the pow- powerful desire to be a mom. Like I can totally understand that. But it seemed like they had just gotten married. Yeah, I would have wanted in, to wait in anyway. April. But I you know like let's just have some couple time here, you know, <laughs> but it's like Julie brought up earlier. I think that this was a way to fix an already failing marriage. Yeah, because she tells her mom, I think it'll really help yeah, things. I want a child of my own. I think it will help things Look, a lot. That baby and is beautiful that, and oh adorable and sweet. But like she she he he she barely made it to his first birthday. Yeah, yeah I know. I mean but she was on dialysis. I was like, That's what? fucking I didn't know serious what that was shit. At ten years old. That is you know, fucking exactly me neither. Like I didn't realize yeah, exactly. I didn't realize that how mm-hmm. serious it was, I don't think, when I was a kid watching this movie. Dialysis, that's fucking serious shit. And the doctor yeah. straight up said you can't have children because if you do, you will fucking die. Yeah. Even though I'm playing devil's advocate here, I actually don't want kids m- m- myself, but I um, I know what it's like to suffer from a chronic illness and like from a young age being told by adults that there's something wrong, wrong, wrong with you and you have to take care of yourself. And like, if you're that, like she, she had type one diabetes. So she had mm-hmm. it since she was a, a, a little kid. And when you grow up with that, you believe that people are like lying to you or they're like, trying to get you to do something that you don't need to do you don't believe there's anything wrong with you so i i get her her belief that there it's not as bad as her mom is saying it is yeah no i think that's a fair point um Mm -hmm. i think that's a fair point and again i feel like what is like her i feel like her husband should also like recognize that you know sometimes being in a partnership is is helping the other person you know totally blame him. see yeah. the right he decisions super, like go ahead sorry yeah like he's seen like i don't know we didn't get a whole lot about his character but i feel like you know come on bro i didn't like him at the wedding when she was trying to like yeah get across to him the seriousness of the situation and he and just he was wouldn't just, get serious yeah with he her. seemed it was like it was not it was a big deal it's like jesus christ yeah. yeah but also i i can't but personally, I can't blame him because Julia Roberts and Shel- like Shelby doesn't seem to take her condition very seriously either. Oh, yeah. And if you're around someone who doesn't take their condition seriously and then you're with their family and they're like, this is very serious. It's one of those like, huh, OK, yeah, I'm around her all the time. It's not that serious, you know. And so I think that that maybe was a break there, too. Like, I don't I don't blame him as much, Like, but I don't blame either of them. Like, but partly because he had no character. He was in like four scenes. Yeah, he that's a no good point. So, like, I, I can't developed speculate about what he made her do or look, didn't make her he's do. He's just because... too pretty. So I'm just going to have to blame him for all of this. <laughs> but it's like I can't speculate on story that wasn't there and wasn't ever even hinted at. You know, like the, it hint, yeah, it was hinted right. at that they have an unhappy marriage, but it wasn't hinted at that he pressured her into having children. Yeah. Because like she even says early on will adopt or will have will buy kids he wants to have 10 kids like we're gonna adopt all 10 and all this stuff but 10 children <laughs> jesus christ like much. what didn't she say 10 kids at some I, point? I think she said 10 kids um anyway i like i don't want to speculate on story that's not there and wasn't in any, any way hinted at but like so i don't i don't blame him necessarily and robert harling has said like his sister like that was she wanted that like that's like the biggest thing she ever wanted was to be a mom yeah yeah 
And I get that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, Malin's not happy about it. Um, And as much as I was siding with her um, in this scene, I also kind of felt like what's done is done. Like, you know, know, at this well, point. Yeah, I don't s- yeah. sit here and be angry forever. Yeah, being angry is not really going to help. When she help. left the room, I was like, okay, she's going to go get a baby blanket. And then she never came back. I was like, oh, I read that <laughs> <Yeah>. wrong. <laughs> well, go <laughs> fuck yourself. Give her a night. Yeah, 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 no, I think my, I think I would have been upset as well. well oh, I would yeah, have been very upset. Because you're like, this is the end. I'm yeah. like, great, happen. great, way I, to right. die, way I to die. I worked so hard like, to keep you alive this yeah. long. For yeah. so you, long. You've had yourself for, for you've had yourself to, for six months and you're already breaking yourself way to go yeah yeah mm-hmm. okay so uh at the christmas party in another display of extreme lack of boundaries mm-hmm. um uh, shelby's father tells everyone in the room that she's pregnant but yeah. she is two months at this point so at least yeah it's getting close to but when you would announce it i but. guess but <sighs> usually the couple announces yeah, yeah. not not the father no, don't worry darling i'm not gonna tell him you're pregnant <laughs> Uh, and uh, this is when you get the, we get the scene where Mel- uh, Melinda's upset and everybody's sort of mm-hmm. gathering yeah. around her and they're like, yeah, you know, the doctor said she couldn't have children. What do they we know? And she's him. like, well, actually, she shouldn't have children. So then this, this is when you get all the, the you know, the, the sisterhood gathered around mm-hmm. her saying, like, let's just focus on the positive, you know, the joy of the situation. She's going to need your help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I think that's what she needed to hear from her friends at that point. I mean, point. yeah, at you know, that point, like, what else like, are you going to do? What else yeah. are you going to do? You know, it's done. You can't be like, well, she'll have an abortion because then <laughs> you would just burst into flame because it's well, Louisiana it's south, and yeah. that's where Jesus was. Well, she would just turn <laughs> around and get prep, 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 right again. Where did we leave After off? Christmas. 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 So we're we're so in summertime. We jump to next July. Ju- well, we don't even jump to the next July. We jump to the July after that. Because when he's a year old. Yeah. You're right. it's not, we don't jump to his birth you're seven right. months later. You're right. We jump to his first birthday. Yes. You're right. So it's right. been a, about a year he's and a half. super mm-hmm. precious. Yeah, that's a cute adorable. little blonde baby. Why is he so blonde? Yeah, they, he does not seem because like he came from those parents. they found a baby who could act, Sarah, I will tell and it you, was blonde. My child is blonde. Blonde, blonde, blonde. And my husband and I both have that's super true. dark brown hair. That's true. It's weird. Hmm. It's true. It's like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Whose baby is this? No, it was it's a hospital gonna get mix darker because my daughter was the same way. But my hair yeah. was black, then blonde, then brown. That's so true. Some weird. people are born blonde and they get yeah, that's browner true. My, later. My, my, my dad had that too. He's a super precious kid though. Yeah, he's, he's so adorable. Cute. So fucking adorable. Um, So we jump to his birthday. Mm-hmm. I will say something that I lacked in this scene was that... I thought you sh- said you were lactating in this scene. No, I was very much <laughs> lactating in this scene. I don't have any Dylan children. Mc- Dylan McDermott rolled in. That, yeah, oh Dylan McDermott God. was there. There was a baby there. I just couldn't help it but lactate. Oh God. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Something that I felt was lacking in this scene was when they were shooting the baby. Not shooting the baby. When they were filming, <laughs> filming the baby. Filming the baby. <laughs> different, movie. Yeah, different, different, different movie. Different, different movie. movie. Different yeah. movie. Sorry, guys. Different movie. Um, that they cut out Julia Roberts' face. Yes. In those they shots, they never showed her. And I was like, was she not available? Yeah. To maybe shoot she. This scene? Maybe they had to do or, some pickups. Like. I don't know what happened, or maybe the maybe baby she hated kids. her and like couldn't <laughs> handle yeah, it being cut held off by her right at the right neck. at her neck. It's and in I the was baby's like, contract. He's like, I will not work with that fucking bitch, Julie <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> it's a rider attached. To maybe he needed to be in his um, mom's arms or something like that. It, that could, maybe it was his was mom little, standing over. Because they had a second kid for the older Jack. Yeah. And I, absolutely. Absolutely. that was the that. same kid. No, no, I saw it in the credits. Really? Yeah. It looked mm-hmm. the same. Uh, exactly. Oh my God. That's um, fucking weird. But I, I wanted to see Julia Roberts interacting with that baby. And so I missed that in this scene. Yeah. They, they really didn't, for all that she went through to have that baby, they didn't have much of a relationship. But maybe yeah. that wasn't really the point of the film. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> the point of the film was to I guess, kill her. Was to have her die. <laughs> she was the martyr. Um God. so <laughs> Do you think that was the point? We go I mean, yeah, that's what it, it's called Julia it's called Kill Julia Roberts. <laughs> it's called <laughs> Murdering <laughs> Shelby. Mur- <laughs> Shelby. That was a the original tale. That was the original Shelby. title. It they decided to go with Steel Magnolias instead. Sperm right. sperm murders. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> sperm sperm murders. 
<laughs> okay, now we're now we're getting to my favorite murder. Um, okay. so they we have the big scene where the the operation. Um, they don't spend yeah. too much time on that. It's no, like the they waiting just show around. Us some, like, real somber good, real, shots. real good. Everybody yeah. tries to bring food, the, which I think is a very southern thing oh, for everyone super. to bring the food over to make sure everybody's yeah. taken yeah. care of. You yeah, know, during and the I, surgery. I loved that scene of Clarie and Weezer in the oh yeah oh, store where she's just she literally just won't stop piling beans into the she's cart. Like, he likes pork and beans. He he eats it with everything. And like Weezer's like, "Uh uh-huh. And just starts putting some of them back. Yeah. Because I feel like that is like what you do when a friend is in crisis is like you really overdo it. Yeah. Because I think. In the South, we all eat. They always eat. Exactly. (laughs) We eat for everything. Oh, yeah. Joy, sadness. For sure. For sure. And I, you know, they didn't talk about it too much, but it's like everybody obviously is concerned about Shelby. She's, her body is delicate. But like, you know, I mean, it's dangerous for uh, Malin as well to be, you mm-hmm. know, having a kidney. And they removed. say yeah. it's worse for her than it would yeah. be for Shelby, which, hmm. which doesn't make much sense. Understand that? Well, either. she's older, I guess. Well, they're like they're going to have to saw her in half to get it out. I'm like, well, they have to put that's, it in. Well, Shelby. that's not. Like, I mean, it's like the same exactly. Deal <laughs> I don't think that's quite how they do it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> um, oh, I mean, that's goodness. that is how they still do a C-section, though. Is they do still saw the woman in half. Entirely. Like a magician. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they just got her on the table just, and just they, they crack slide her, it out. They crack her open. And then they sew her back. They together. crack her open like a walnut. Just mm-hmm. pull the baby out and just glue yeah, the exactly. slabs they make back like a together. Drawer. Exactly. Oh. That is exactly how it happens. It's a drawer. That is a really well, that's great what they metaphor. Do. That's there. what they do for my body because yeah. I just keep popping them out. Not anymore. I've been told I can't. They know. Told me I can't have any more. Everyone children. in your life too busy. Everyone has told you. <laughs> Even the children are like, seriously, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, could you not? Okay, so uh, surgery is a success, mm-hmm. right? And we move on to my Halloween. favorite, my favorite holiday, which is Halloween. Yeah. 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 Um, and Truvies is all decked out by Anel, right? Yeah, Nell does the Which dec- is weird to me Wait, that yeah, she's not all she, weird about that. Isn't she like super Christian, but she decorates for Halloween, right? Well, I don't think Nell decorated it because remember oh, she it was decorated her surprise for bridal shower oh, for that's Halloween. Right. That's and right. because she, she says, I've always Christmas. wanted to throw a bridal shower with a monster theme. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, that's what you get for getting married kind of on a, Halloween. Yeah. His hair is making me. <laughs> what? What? what an unusual Men are monsters. What an unusual bridal theme. <laughs> yeah. I would love it. Like there's nothing I want more <laughs> than love. Oh, I'm making the face because it doesn't seem like a Nell's char- character that she would no. like that. But I think she just but- like- picked that day her husband no is very like he dracula a vampire. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of makes um, sense she obviously the has a thing for mantra <laughs> the veil is thin my husband is coming to visit me <laughs> her husband's last name her ex-husband anyway oh boy um so yeah they have the the bridal shower for oh and her. all the presents and uh <laughs> she gets some some crashless i remember that as yeah. a kid i was like Ooh. what I'm, i remember thinking <laughs> well, like malin is also back up on her feet at this point too yes and that's is true. Out of it's, party it's, it's halloween true. It's halloween she has the surgery in july so yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's been a while and, her, and she seems back to me she's like back she's at recover- work shelby's back yeah. at work um she's still got the terrible haircut and oh. Um. Yeah, and so then, oh God, the rest of this movie is just so much it's tears. So sad. I didn't take so any many... notes practically after As this. As a kid, I was sobbing. Like, Why would you don't pick him up? You know, because she know. picks him up. I'm like, oh my God, he probably weighs like 40 pounds. Why would you hold him above your <laughs> well, like, not, I don't think you it's weigh. okay. Well, we're dancing around it, but what happens is she's at the hospital ending. So Shelby's at the hospital ending her shift. Yes, she clearly is having some. Or, yeah, whatever, she's because yeah. she works with the babies. She's uh, clearly having some kind of spell while she's there, which at that mm-hmm. point I'm like, girl, you're like, in a hospital. Drink some help. juice. Tell somebody that you're not feeling yeah, well. Yeah, she she raises her arm to put on her jacket and she's like, ugh. Yeah. But I get it too. Like, you're a mom. You're like, I'm too busy to be sick. I got things to do. But also, if you know you only I have like she one also good had kidney. a kidney transplant. <laughs> like, I know, but we prior. all, like, all mothers can relate to this. It's Halloween. I got to get home. I got to get my I son got in the cute costume. little clown we costume. got to go trick or treating. Oh, like, you yeah. don't. So when you're a mom, like, it's, it's all, I feel like it's worse when you have a medical condition and then you have children because even as, like, regular people can't, don't take care of themselves when they have children. Like, you don't shower, you know, you hardly go to the bathroom. So, like, you, when you get, you don't have time to be sick. You just don't. Yeah. 
So even if she was feeling something, she was probably like, I'm fine. I got things to do. I'm going to go home. Mm-hmm. And that's what she does. She goes home. It's so sad. Oh, God. Somebody it else take worst. this. I can't. I can't. Well, can't. So she, she can't she gets, do it. She gets ready for she, Halloween with the with the baby. And he's in his little clown costume. And oh. he's got his little jack-o'-lantern. He's and so she, precious. So precious. And, and she I goes don't even like clowns. Up. But he was adorable. Yeah. She goes to pick him up. And she falls a little faint and can't lift him up. And then says, OK, baby, let's go call daddy. Which, why not 911? Who knows? But she decides to call dad, and then the next scene we have is Dexter. Uh, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> I hated this part so much. Yeah, is the dad no, coming home? Is Jackson coming? What home? I hate is that he. It took him so long to see what was happening. Like he was I just know. like. I'm just what? like there are chairs What's tipped over. On? There's a pot overflowing yeah. on the I don't oven. Know. Like, like the it's like you know the, the baby the baby is literally pointing, pointing at it. <laughs> the, like, the, like he's like what's the, what's going on? I'm like is dinner ready? Do you know oh your wife's condition? Like that would be like immediately if like a pot was going I'd be like she's dead. Like yeah. how does he yeah. not That's because you're a woman. Like yeah. I feel like if Chris came home and like <laughs> He'd I be had like, a damn the cold <laughs> Chris would probably be like, be like call him home I'm going to the office. He'd probably be like I'm going to go watch, I I'm going to I'm going to go practice some ping pong in the in the ground. and then it would be like an hour later but he'd be like an hour <laughs> oh, no. or two. He'd stumble over my body trying to get some coffee. No, he'd see yeah. Jack <laughs> Charlotte eating would probably you. Jack, and hide eating Jack, you. Jack would be eating my dead body before he found me. And then Charlotte he'd be like, probably oh skip it on her God. iPad. No, my kids would find me way Jack before he did. Oh, I know. Charlotte would skip into dad and be like, I don't I know, know my mom hasn't moved in several hours. Jack Bye. You yeah. want to watch my iPad with me? I fully can imagine like Chris coming home and then like not finding my body He's just not very for several hours unless it's blocking yeah, unless it's blocking the area where he needs to get hysterical coffee. Hysterical toddler's behavior. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hysterical. That, that part was baby. really the hard. Baby. The screaming <laughs> baby, the screaming baby was really hard and for me. Pointing, it was just and then oh. she's just sprawled on the floor. Oh, God. Still it was trying so, to hold the phone. so rough. I know. So rough. That was so hard for me. It was really sad. I was in. I was super. This is when this the tears point. began. Yeah. yeah. This is where they begin and they don't end for another thirty no, minutes until no. this movie tears. ends. It doesn't end until the end. Of the movie. Yeah. There's, it's just like still about tears. thirty minutes left at this point. It's thirty <laughs> minutes of tears. It's just sobbing. I mean, it's so just many dry, crying. irritated I mean, eyes. I think I at, almost woke up my baby crying at this <laughs> point. <laughs> At this point, I started pausing it every 10 minutes to go check my laundry, and I had to, like, walk out of my apartment just like, (laughs) I'm going to be okay. I'm going to walk down the stairs to just check my laundry, make sure it's The neighbors are like, it's Hillary. She's crying and doing her laundry again. (laughs) They're like, and I'm wandering through the halls in my caftan with no bra on, and they're like, oh, man, here comes the witch of Twin Gate again. (laughs) The witch of Twin Gate. (laughs) (laughs) God damn it. Oh, God. Shrieking. Like a monster. She's like shrieking and sobbing she through the halls in, in a long black caftain. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So Shelby goes into a coma. Yes. That they yeah. don't think she'll ever come out of, it said. Yeah. They said. Yeah. But you couldn't hear that unless I you had the subtitles on. I did not understand. Oh, I had you and I both on. watched yes. it with the subtitles yeah, on. No. So you and I both saw all, all I, of those all conversations. I, all I heard was... Brum, 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 brum. <laughs> Oh, well, they're yeah. not actors. <laughs> no, they said she'll never come out of the coma. Oh, Jesus! Yeah, yeah. That's they're like it's irreversible. Mm-hmm. I think well, is what he said. No, they. I mean, I've listened to enough stories to know that there's no way for us to know for sure if someone's going to come out of a coma or not, or even if they're still yeah. like. But it is unlikely. Yeah. They are. They can tell you when it's unlikely based on their brain activity. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what it said in the closed captioning. Yeah. So her mother is there by her side. Um, and never leave constantly yeah well never i leaves. would be i yeah. wouldn't leave yeah, and then her oh husband comes in and says come on go, come get some real she's food like, and she's get like off me. get off me. <laughs> she could wake up for two seconds and i would and i won't be be here i need to it be here so in case she w- w- wakes up yeah. which i thought was very real yeah. like yeah. i feel like sally that... field just was amazing oh god, god. the it women be- in this film the actors are so great there were there were some scenes like the the first scene of the the argument between them when they were talking about how she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. I thought that that could have been directed better. Like I felt like the emotion was there. I felt like it could have been directed better. But in these scenes right here, I was like, this is awesome. And yeah. it was it was where the directing and the acting came together very beautifully for me. I thought there were a few very overwrought shots of medical equipment. Yeah, there were a lot of those, but but and I will when we I, talk I mean, we're the gonna, acting of the director or the directing of the actors. 
there definitely was a lot of like lingering on medical equipment for long yeah. periods of time. Like, These are real doctors and nurses. We're going to get everything we can out of their <laughs> expertise. Yeah. Um, but I do think the stuff with her mom, I thought the scene where she was like showing her pictures of the baby and oh. like, mm-hmm. that was all very, I mean, it's just all heartbreaking. It's just yeah. all fucking heartbreaking. Um, Try to do so quietly. So I guess, you know, not much to say about this really other than like her mom is the one who's like really like it seems like the husband and the father are like kind of in and out, you know, we yeah. really see her there like all the time. And then they switch. You see, get the scene where he's signing the he clipboard. Signs the papers. Yeah. And then uh, he yeah. leaves and they very have her stoically. We have Sally Field heartbreakingly yeah. in the background still holding her daughter's hand. I mean, while he's I would, I would, I would be just heart oh yeah but yeah. i would hope the husband would be too you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Right. well everybody deals with their emotions yeah that's true that's and true I think he might point... just want to get out of there because yeah. it's just so sad but he like wasn't in this movie at all and i like yeah. felt like that was an opportunity to bring him into this movie and make him part of the family but in a way like, but i actually be like i don't want to do it i want to do it and right. you know what do i do about this and or, this is know, a I miss time that. in real life like my, my mom's friend at the this happened to her dad like he was in a coma and the whole family fought about whether he would be you know whether they they would pull the plug plug or not so they didn't have that in in this movie like i'm glad they did though i don't think that was the point and also jackson is the one who gets to make that decision yeah because he's the husband but i wanted him to be a part of those scenes I get that, but I think that we, as we, you've already d- mentioned, that this movie isn't about them, and I think yeah. it's about how the women are strong, and in a way, mm-hmm. it's kind of about how the men aren't. Well, yeah, it does that show that one scene where Sally Field yeah. kind of leaves the room, but she's still watching, and he's in there talking to her and holding mm-hmm. her hand. Yeah, it's not like, like he wasn't there, yeah. but definitely, like, I think it was very intentional that we have everybody in the room when they're shutting the machines off and slowly everyone leaves but the mother and the mm-hmm. mother is the mm-hmm. one that stays and i think yeah, that yeah god i'm gonna get upset just talking about it <laughs> like it's just so fucking dark it's just so dark she's the only one who's there well no yeah. no one will will lo- love you like your mom loves you i mean sir, m- yeah most moms right there are certainly instances where people have toxic relationships with their parents um and complicated relationships but yeah i think that in this situation that is the case is that you know yeah she's gonna be there until the very last moment and then does the first thing that i would want to do which is immediately go and hold the baby baby. yeah Mm -hmm. and that scene oh my well the music really like manipulated yeah i mean the whole thing is very manipulative but she ran from the hospital to get the baby you know and that that in and of itself was just like (laughs) yeah well that's what you want you want the thing you want to you want to hold that yeah you know pure beautiful you know child in your arms Mm -hmm. yeah and he was so happy oh yeah when he's smiling when he's like laughing and walking down the walkway to her oh my god it was so, so great. Sad. So great. Oh, guys, we're just going to cry through the rest of this podcast. Yeah. Just like fucking tears. Tears all over the place. Comedy podcast. <laughs> who wants to make a joke? <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to talk about the super sad funeral scene? You mean the best scene that Sally Field has ever performed in her life? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a tall order, but I definitely think this is a good performance. Yes. This is a great performance oh no it was really fucking it was good a great performance now i don't know sally field's entire uh roster this is definitely up but there this was a beautiful scene yeah well why don't you take us her. take us there so we we pretty much catch up with the funeral at the end of it and um sally field is the only one still standing next to the casket covered in pink roses yeah because of course it's pink um and all of the other women sort of notice that she's still staying there. And we get these moments of Clarie and Weeza and all of the other women at their cars that are kind of like, no, I, I, I got to go back. And they all start to walk back. And even back. the husband sees mm-hmm. and then doesn't walk then up to her. doesn't go back. Yeah. But the women go back and they start to comfort her and talk to her about it and like sort of hold her hand through it well Anel starts oh, with yeah. saying that uh, well, you know we she'll be rejoicing shelby's where she's in a better she place basically was her like king. god has a plan yeah yeah. <laughs> well, yeah but then i feel like 
the next thing she said. Oh yeah, was, was really actually great. something really nice. Oh for sure. Right. And and you know, uh, Malin's response is basically like, "Well, I'm sorry if I can't rejoice right I'm now, selfish. but I'm selfish and I want her to be here with me," which I feel like yeah. is exactly what I would feel like if somebody said that to me. Exactly. But yeah, what she's what she says next is actually really beautiful. What did she say next? I forget. Um, it, it's something along the lines of like, "What what gets me through this?" when this, these things happen to me is knowing that I have someone up there who will always be young, who will always be beautiful, who will always be spry and in her best part of her life and that she's on my side. Okay. As a guardian angel. Right. That, like that now Shelby, yeah. you know, Shelby had she all these things all that the she things wanted she to do and, and here on earth she wasn't able to do those things. Her body just wouldn't let her and now she can do whatever she wants yeah, and she's going to be there to be like, protecting. Fuck you. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, as I, an atheist, that's hard to said, hear. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. She, at least, she said it in a way that. I think, in a way, it was sort it, of yeah, in a way. Game. I mean, yes, it was still, I think, based in Christian beliefs. But I think most of those women all do go to church, and that's yeah. something yeah. that would be comforting yeah, to Malin them. Is mm-hmm. Definitely Christian. I mean, like, yeah. But, but in yeah. a way, there was something sort of almost non-denominational yes, about it. Where yes, her yes. basic thing that she was saying was that. You know, she was struggling with this health issue and now she's not struggling anymore. And in in her belief and in their belief, their shared belief, there is some kind of afterlife. And in Mm -hmm. that afterlife, she is uh, still she'll be waiting for us and she'll be, you know, her body will be strong and she'll be happy and and she's going to be looking down on you. Right. Well, you know, I didn't really even think it. she was saying like she's in heaven waiting for us Mm -hmm. you know it felt like you said more denominational if people could just think that there is something after this you know right right and it felt and that she'll be watching over you as some kind of guardian and her child which is what she wanted to do and that's one of the things that daryl hannah brings up in in the role i can't never remember her name the whole time and now i want to call her annabelle the whole time no that's a creepy Um, doll is such a stupid name i know it was dumb um, but and now like it, it talks about how the only thing she wanted to do in this world was to raise that baby and mm-hmm. like it is it's it's obviously the one thing she wanted to do because she gave her life to do it yeah. and now in her afterlife she is able to watch over him as some sort of guardian angel type being mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I, I found it very comforting in a way yeah but I don't know I'm very confused about I mean, my beliefs I, of the afterlife so I I don't know how I would react in that situation. I hope I never have to find out. Um, yeah. You never, as a parent, you never want. I mean, she said, it's exactly what she says. You, you're not supposed to go. You know, children aren't supposed to go before you. you right. And she, I think you expect my, to. My, my, I think scene, my, my fa- favorite line in this, it was in the play too, is um, I was there when she drifted into this world and I was there when she dri- drifted out. It's yeah, that's yeah. the creature or whatever. She, yeah, yeah, this beautiful creature. Yeah, that's the heartbreaking. <sighs> and that's like what I was thinking about while she was sitting there holding her hand is that, you know, you're there yeah. the moment that your children enter the world. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she was there. You shouldn't there. be there the moment they... No, but... you shouldn't be. But but if you have to be, if, yeah, you if will the, be. then at least, you know, there you're there and they're not alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to stir. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I'm like, can't. I'm trying so hard. I not. can't. <laughs> drink that that comedy <laughs> podcast going, guys. Please don't make um, me cry on my comedy <laughs> podcast. Okay, so then. The she lump is in my throat, you guys. Then Sally Field delivers the best monologue I'm just so of mad. Monologues. I'm just so mad. It is the best monologue of yes. monologues. Where yeah. she, yeah, she I talks just about being mad. I just want to hit something. I just want to hit something to make it feel as bad well, as I can. It and... starts with her handing her the mirror because earlier, you know, oh, at the beauty she salon, broke down with the... right? Yeah, beauty, early at the in this film at the beauty salon, um, you know, Truvy's like, "What do you want me to do with your hair, Melin?" And, no, and it's she's like, and oh. Anel who says it because Anel has to do oh, her right, hair right, for right. the wedding, and she she's says, like, just, "Just do it like a brown football, football helmet, helmet. <laughs> yeah. and she'll be fine." And yeah. she's like, "Oh, shut up!" And like then it in this scene it harkens back to that right she's looking at it in the mirror and you know she's like you know can i does anyone have a mirror and she's she says it is a brown football helmet and just starts sobbing all over again yeah 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 the The shatter this was a a really fun scene to play because i I played clary so i got to be the one with like yeah milan hit her yeah yeah Yeah. that was very fun to play. I mean, this is a beautiful scene for all of them. I, like everybody gets a special a moment. Beautiful scene yeah. for friends. Yeah. You know, like yeah. where your friend is going through something that is so incomprehensibly mm-hmm. hard, and you have to find a way 
to get her to leave this place and go on with her life. Mm-hmm. And the only thing you can do is just hit hit her. Hit it's, this other person. That's what Robert Harling was saying. That's how he yeah. came up with that because that's he's like, what would Susan have done? You know, and mm-hmm. that's why he oh, did that. Oh, that's so and, sweet. And I think that that right there is like such a true moment of like, I, I don't know. It's not well, self-deprecation. It's like, shock, but it's, it's like shocking you into yeah, exactly. what he said. the yeah. reality, like bringing you back to earth. Like she is, yeah. I mean, and this is not going to be the last time in her life that she's up in the clouds with her grief. Like mm-hmm. grief is an ongoing process that takes yeah. the rest of your it, life. It doesn't to, end right To here. comprehend. But, you know, in that moment, she's in the clouds. She's, she's swirling with the anger and the grief that she's feeling. Mm-hmm. And this thing that Clarie does is bring her back to reality shocking like yeah, throwing cold water on her face yeah. almost yeah, yeah. and but then it, it turns into something that becomes a moment of laughter of comedy yeah. Yeah. yeah and and i loved jolly parton's line in this when truvy says um crying through laughter is my best emo- or is my favorite emotion yeah. and like i think that that's a lot of people's favorite emotion when you're like so sad that the only thing you can do is to laugh and mm-hmm. like i i think we've all been at a certain point like that where you're like you're sad about someone's death or something that's happened and then you have this moment of like but you remember that time when yeah. and like you yeah. just start laughing and you can't help but laugh because like you've had great times together and I think that that's what this scene is for sure it's like right I don't know I liked I like the laughter and it's the also tears. I think it's bringing normalcy too. back bringing something that's normal which is yeah. to Weezer. make fun of Weeza yes, yes. like that's the thing that they all do together and you know at Louisa's expense yeah it becomes it allows them to bring in something that's normal and my uh, other favorite part of the play was when Weezer and I um sat on the bench a- afterwards and kind of mm-hmm. like ma- made up and that was such a sweet scene yeah, yeah. Know, like after the funeral when they all so they're they go at the back wake. to the house mm-hmm. and it comes it comes full circle at this point because we start off at the house with the wedding and then we come back to the house yeah, and I after didn't the realize for the that reception. until I saw the pool behind them with the cover on top yeah. of it because I remember them because throwing the magnolias exactly, in there they, because they threw they the magnolia pointed blossoms. it out yeah yeah they pointed it out earlier. accused them of stealing the magnolia blossoms from their tree yeah um and I thought that that was a great way to bring it full circle and bring it right back to it and and have these women sort of like rekindle their friendship. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah. not that it was ever gone. No. Yeah, you yeah. know, they've been friends for however many years yeah. and they all know we make fun of, fun of Weeza and they sit on this bench and have this like great little moment of laughter Knocking and pushing each other, each other off. off. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I love I love you more than my l- luggage. I, n- I never knew what that line meant, yeah. but it was fun to say. The director, <laughs> or either director or the writer, and the extras on the DVD mm-hmm. were saying that mm-hmm. it got a little too real when she's like, you know, I yeah. love you more, and she had to put in than my luggage to make it like just kidding, you know? Because yeah. I mean, she really does love her, you know? Yeah. A, yeah, yeah, a friend, and just um, they just don't ever get that like mm-hmm. gushy with each other or whatever, yeah. you know? But I think they've had like little moments throughout the whole thing, mm-hmm. like because there's an earlier scene where they're talking about um, the transplant, and uh, Clarice says to her, like, you know, you'd give a kidney to that dog if he needed it. Yeah, you know, and it's one of those things like they they their relationship is built off of like humor, and yeah. they find a way to make their little like hatred and like little bickering work for them mm-hmm. and like i think that this moment is it's really good natured ribbing that. yeah exactly good natured ribbing yeah and then this is where we find out that anel is pregnant which is such an odd place to bring it up but okay. well it seemed i didn't get the indication that this was, was she, in that dress oh, she said pregnancy. She name it. Shelby. Yeah, I think they all Shelby knew. Shelby I think they all like, knew about it already. It didn't okay. seem like anybody well, was like, "Whoa!" She also was like holding her, her stomach yeah. a little bit, yeah. and she was in that big flowy dress. Yeah. and I was like, "She's supposed to be pregnant." Yeah, based on the costuming choices, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, she says that they're gonna. She wants to name the baby Shelby. Yeah, and um, we get the little scene with them pushing Jackson in the swing, which is cute. Yeah. Wait, they named the son Jackson. After the dad. After the dad, yeah. The baby Jack. Jack it's, yeah. Jackson, Jackson Latimer? What Jackson Jr. Latchery well, Latchery. Sarah, he wanted yeah. a son. He wanted a son. He could, <sighs> He says he's fine either way, but I can just tell. He, he just boy. wants a boy so bad he can taste it. Oh, taste God. that baby boy goodness. Because <laughs> I remember we were watching this and I was like, I think 
that's weird when that's you say it like that. It. Yeah, yeah, let's not. A, I just let's like not, the boys. So let's not taste locked that out. Let's not taste babies. <laughs> let's not. You're okay with sniffing them, but not tasting them. Babies smell amazing. I don't babies think they smell, smell different than other people. people. Babies smell intoxicating. They, they smell like, like sunshine and hay and beautiful days. They smell <laughs> like I think when I have a baby, like I'll know anything. what they smell like. But babies smell, smell like, like the promise of a better tomorrow. And <laughs> snuggles. <laughs> my boy loves. My children love oh. to snuggle. Oh my god. The moms are over here like, no, but really they smell like the promise of a they better smell tomorrow. The two non moms like, like there's no better tomorrow. You can't you can't bottle that's anything oh God, you no. can't bottle anything that smells better. Like I can smell it right now. Oh my, oh my god. god. I just like I have tried to sniff a baby before and it just like it doesn't you gotta smell get in like there. Anything. Are you it smelling like their anything. heads? Yeah, Are like, you smelling I, their I heads? I kiss every baby I come in contact with. Like I'm up in that baby just sniffing it, <laughs> kissing its little forehead. Me too. But they don't no, smell like they don't it. smell like anything. Anything. Maybe it's your own baby. I don't know. No, I, when I <laughs> smell other people's own. babies, my she does. I drop she like at least 10 babies. or 15 eggs just smelling <laughs> I've smelling well, someone else's people baby. who want kids versus people who don't yeah i don't know i think that's a big part of i don't it. know like I, don't I love know. holding other people's babies i will well, cry yeah, over them be because like, they're just so precious and back. perfect <laughs> and then i'm like goodbye yeah <laughs> have a wonderful night i'm gonna go get drunk <laughs> <laughs> Bye. anything else to say about this funeral scene no, I don't want to talk anymore. No, I don't. I, talk I don't. Talk about how babies smell instead. Let's talk. Well, we, let's wrap it up with let's this last scene, well, up, Easter, which is an yeah. Easter scene with this the fake Easter. flowers. The fakest ass flowers I've ever seen in the hillside. I, think I was crying too much. I think they like banked on you having like glazed over eyes from that the you wouldn't notice the bad production design. I did not I notice, notice it either. because I was it was like so it's bad. like it was like somebody went to Michaels me. and pu- plucked those flowers out of the fabric flower yeah. area and then just jammed them into the hillside. Oh my god! <laughs> they weren't even all like. In the same family of flowers, it was weird. Yeah, no. Wonder why they did that. They it said they filmed it in the summer, so like the Christmas scene was in the summer. Uh, so everyone was like dying, dying. With their sweaters on, and well, crap. there's no that, flowers in the summer in the south. That's true. No, nope. yeah. There so at least there would be some there's swamp vegetation land. that was alive though that they could yeah. put there. You yeah. know? Like, <laughs> um. So they're having an Easter egg hunt. Baby Jackson is there. Mm-hmm. Big Jackson is at least taking his son on the He's Easter egg hunt. He's through. forced to parent now. <laughs> <laughs> forced parenting. He's, He's forced, forced to be in this movie. Forced now. in that yeah, situation. You're a dad now, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to dadhood. Um, yeah. So she goes into labor, mm-hmm. and uh, we get the big very immediately has aerial to go to the sh- hospital. Well, Super that's how urgent. labor works in movies. It, in yeah, movies. I was about to say in, t- in TV and film. In real the life, the baby comes really quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah. just skip all that boring labor shit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we have this like uh, long sort of aerial shot yeah, of them of, following. Uh, but you get Sammy to see the, the town of his, again, the which is bike. nice. Yeah. This right now was the most Louisiana scene of the whole movie. Was yeah. the scene where they take off in a jeep with a pregnant lady, which is super safe, and then a bunny hops on the back seat of a motorcycle driven by a guy with pink and green hair. Are you sure this is Louisiana you're talking off. about, or Florida? When you say no, it's Louisiana. A bunny. Okay. Do you mean a bunny bunny or a guy dressed up as a the bunny? guy dressed up as a bunny? Okay. But he's for wearing second, like, the bunny hey, how head. Did I miss that? No, <laughs> he's wearing the bunny head for some reason. Yeah, he on doesn't the back take of the it off. He doesn't my doesn't helmet. Take it's it off. Okay. Yeah, right. it's for his cranial protection. Right. The other guy doesn't need any. He's got pink hair. Who cares? Well, he's a rebel. What is the son's name? It wasn't Bud, I don't was know. it? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I don't. Like Riff. You know, it's like Riff. something really weird. You're thinking of Biff. Biff. From Biff. Well, Biff Biff Riff was in Riff 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 West Side Story. So I have no idea what his name was. It's fine. It's fine. But um, he's just always in so a hurry on that bike. He is always in <laughs> any, a hurry. Any final thoughts about Steel Magnolias? Any final thoughts? This movie was great, you guys. Okay. It was okay. I really right. enjoyed okay. it. Okay. I liked the female friendships in it. I, I thought did like that, that. The message of like, your friends are never going to be the ones that leave you and mm-hmm. that they are going to be the ones that are there for you through thick and thin. I thought that that was a really great message. And I think it's something that resonates very well in my life. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this was a very special play for me in high school because it was the first lead role. I was Kat Caston and um, 
it was a really fun experience. We went to state com- competition. We won third place. Um, All right. And uh, didn't you like win an award? I, I, won, I won best a- actress at Yay. region. Um, you know, I didn't. I, I, I think I appreciate it more after we've talked about it. Like, again, I mean, I've seen this movie a bunch of times, but like, uh, I don't, uh, I don't like to cry. So I don't like mm-hmm. to seek out, like, I don't, I don't I love crying. I don't like it I when movies yeah, make me cry. I don't cry. watch a movie and be depressed. Or I don't. Sad. And I, I don't like crying. movies where women die when they're babies or babies. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate that the women in this film had like real relationships and that those relationships were front yeah. and center and they weren't based around men. The men were right. very secondary. Mm-hmm. And um, I appreciate this sort of theme that we've uncovered in our discussion about like women being st- the strong ones, women's being yeah. the one, m- women being the ones that are made of steel and their friendships being really strong. And then like, you know, like not, I don't want this to come out saying like, I hate men and there are men men are stupid but it's like there's it's so what? rare that you have <laughs> a film where you know the female relationships aren't based on some kind of jealousy about a man or like about mm-hmm. men or even like with beaches which had a lot to do with women dealing with men's and they this is really about the strength of the sisterhood between them mm-hmm. and I do uh, uh I yeah. do really appreciate and value that. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. I'm Welcome to Nervous Breakdowns. Uh, this is the part of the show where we read nightmarish casting breakdowns. Um, cold from the depths of the internet. These are real, actual casting breakdowns um, that that you can submit for if you feel like this role calls to you. Thank God. This one I was sent to us these. by a listener. <laughs> says, is this real? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have man. some questions. God I have some questions. I I could read that so we we don't say the title. We don't add the title or the production company. Um, and so I've redacted some things. But, um, and I'm, I'm going to hold on to this. Just go ahead and take a look yeah, at that I title. I wish we could read the title. <laughs> Uh, get, if you look down at some of the information, I have questions as to whether this is real or not, or a satirical breakdown. But uh, uh, we were sent this by a listener, so this is a real casting breakdown. Um, I have to say his name. Let's hear this. Yeah. Right. So go ahead, Hillary. You, go ahead, read the synopsis. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is an action movie starring Donald Trump. Mr. Trump is a cop who has to save the president of the United States. Donald Trump, who is his twin brother. Apparently, they have the same name. Okay. The, Sounds right. It's, it's Yeah, sure. Uh, the cop is the unknown twin brother of Mr. Trump, the one who left home many years ago, exclamation point. Wow. Mexican terrorists have infiltrated the U.S. soil because the president wants to recover the American territory that was stolen by Mexico years ago territory that many historians paid by mexico pretend is mexican what seems like there's some some some, some conspiracy theories like, going what? on here is he talking about louisiana is he talking about the louisiana purchase uh is that what maybe this is supposed to be I'm, about that's a, such a boring history lesson <laughs> like make a better movie <laughs> so mr trump in parentheses. Let's never call him Mr. The President. Let's never call him the President. Dr. No. Trump. <laughs> Dr. Trump. God, no. Drug. If only he wishes. Uh, want to send all the Mexicans to China in order to destroy China. But the terrorists sent this is by a real the casting Mexican breakdown, you guys. government want to kill him, supported by all the legal immigrants sent by the Mexican government in order to subtly invade the U.S., Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mexico is super on it in this movie. They are sending people sadly, to the I US. Feel, sadly, to I feel like this China? film would have more, more, oh more e- would be, find it easier to get funding than any of our films do. Well, probably. <laughs> um, the movie so will explain sad. how Mexico is at war with the US, financed by North Korea, Russia, China, Cuba, and all the pro communist countries in the world. 
what i know it feels like a fever dream (laughs) the movie ends with u.s superb military recovering the american lost territory and cuba sinking into the ocean accepting submissions before uh 2022 yeah so, so you feel like plenty of time to get time your to get audition this which is why i wonder like is this real like did somebody just put like i add feel this like breakdown this is up something there? that someone like wakes up from like sleep sleeping and is like i have this crazy dream let me take out my let notes me out. let me get uh, like let me onion. get actors okay. involved is this an onion ad i'm not <laughs> no, even all not. the way through this you guys <laughs> i'm not even all the way through this yeah, let's finish um, this. so the project is paid Thank uh, God. oh my goodness the special instructions is if you despise all things Mexican, the better. Oh Nothing racist gosh. about that. Please do yourself a fucking yeah, right? favor and step into an El Torero and treat yourself to a plate of nachos because you will not hate Mexicans anymore. You will just not find a way to. So are you to. saying the answer to world peace is, is queso? Is yes, queso. it's queso. Okay. Queso is the answer to world peace. Just give it to people and they'll understand. I, th- I don't know. I feel like this director may be beyond queso. It seems like they've got a deep... They obviously are lactose deep, intolerant, and I cannot help them. Guacamole's deep, just deep, not as good. Deep-seated racism really <laughs> kicking inside their bodies. I mean, guacamole's just <sighs> not as good as queso. Is this it's real, though? Is this real? Know. Okay, read the, read the character. Okay. Is this real, or is somebody trolling, Someone is trolling. this casting site? So the only oh. open role that you can apply for Well, I don't know. There might be more. This but is this all, is what's this available This is all we were... Sc- right again, now. this was sent by a listener, so I think it was a Screenshot Website too. I'm yeah. sorry. I just it was, looked for this. Oh, it's a screenshot. Yeah, damn that's it. Not a real, yeah. God damn. No, it is a real casting no, 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 breakdown. I believe that came from. I'm saying <sighs> that's I would a never bummer, it. man. Okay. The first, the role that you are available to play is female Mexican terrorist. One, two, three, four. Dot. 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 Ninety nine. Okay, this has got to be fake. Are you sincerely telling me they're going to hire 99 people no, to play? No, they're not going to hire 99 women. It's female Mexican terrorists. They're not going to hire 99 okay, well, women to play these terrorist roles. Read read the description. All right. <laughs> By the way, it's a, a supporting female from 9 to 160 years I old. I swear to God, this has got to be fake. Or so somebody who doesn't know how to fill out the form properly. Um, <laughs> I am. I mean? I'm like, sorry, 9 to 160. I'm sorry, I am 160 years old, but I still would never play this role. Um, these roles are for American women who can say Ave Maria in terrible Spanish. I think you've got the part, Hillary. The worse they say <laughs> it, the better for the movie. I definitely think I can say this, you guys. Is this I, real? No, I'm 160 years so? old and I this took French in but high school. It, it's from a legitimate oh site. Goodness. It's from a site. Yeah, yeah. No, that's but anybody less can legit. be on a legitimate thing. Anybody can. Yeah. You have money to do this. And I'm you sure can do it's it. some drunken nonsense. You think? <laughs> I, hope it I don't is. know. I really that's so, so so extreme. Like I just could not believe it. But I think that's why somebody sent it to us because they were like, "What the fuck?" Is I feel this? like I didn't bring the mood down to like call <laughs> to what it was from, and then it, it's like a really legitimate site, and that's it's, really upsetting. yeah, it's fucking insane. It seems like really that upsetting. would be where they would let that be on their site. You know? Well, I don't know it how might not still be. It's there. not. I looked for it. Oh, it's good, not there anymore. Good. It's not there. So okay. if you want to submit, your time is up. Your, your window has closed. Twenty twenty two has come and gone. Come and gone. Welcome to Plug It Up. Uh, This is the part of the show where we talk about um, stuff that we're up to and stuff that our guests are up to. So you can find find out about all that stuff, about the aforementioned stuff. The stuff. The stuff that we will be talking about (laughs) in three, two, one. Julie. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um... You can find my my photography at juliejonesivyphotography.com. And it's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. In fact, it's if you guys are beautiful. fans of Critical Crop Top and you've seen uh, the cast photos from any of the shows that we've done this year, all of those group photos um, for the show and publicity my gorgeous headshot. have been done by Julie. They're thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. Um, I I want to, I'm, I'm in the midst of redoing my website to add nice. that. Uh-huh. I said, nice. Thank you. <laughs> to add like the promo type photography as well. Um, but I have um, headshots on there and um, like commercial print looks for actors because that's she another does gorgeous headshots. Thank you. It's another revenue stream for actors like print work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, yeah, so like I said, I'm working on two 
two f- yeah. short films. Yep. One is an experimental poetry film. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Uh, he's called, my husband's a poet, so um, what? I'm using his poetry. And oh, I really? shot this like a while back with a very talented actor It was earlier actor this year. Friend. It was around the same time we shot Vera and we haven't released that yet. Wow. Yeah, the super talented actor, Sean Middlebrooks, is, is the only person in the film but um it's about uh it's called walking man okay. and it's about a child's view of war and wow. um from his pers- this kid's perspective it's interesting and um and you shot it yourself as well i did <laughs> wow yeah. just julie oh what thank you awesome. i have you're to so edit it <laughs> cool. you're so cool oh thank you oh, but um he's just a soldier who went to vietnam and and just didn't come back the same way and uh and just he he's kind of based on a true person uh, from a town my husband was from, and he just people would see him walking in his fatigues, just walking on the side of the road on in town. He would guard the ladies when they would lock up at the like hair salon at night. Wow. He would stand guard for them. It's just interesting, but um, I just felt really um. I don't know. I just really wanted to do that poem for some reason. There's a few others we want to do, but I chose that one first because Sean is just amazing. That sounds Known awesome. Known him for a long time. And then the other one is called Long Con Mom. Okay. <laughs> and, we, and, I, and I worked on the pickups yes, for this. Yes, yeah, she so did. On, on the, I did the, the uh, sound. Yes, the location sound. It was a wonderful day. And it was, really fun. It was all ladies except mm-hmm. for the yeah, father of the, it was one of the actresses. all lady crew. <laughs> <laughs> it was really great. Yeah. And, um, so that we used a lot of um, a lot of our crew were Georgia State students, so that was really awesome. fun. And um, it's just about a mom and her. And Weston worked on that too, right? He did. Weston, who has worked on a couple things with yeah, us, yeah, Motherload, and uh, I believe he, he worked, worked on Bad Day, Bad and he day. was in Dick Pick Professional. Yeah. Yes. yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was he was the DP on that. Wow, as well. he's a really talented filmmaker and cinematographer. I like I've been really impressed with him. I've known him since he was like 18 years old. Like, okay. He's he's a t- he's become like super talented in that. Like, yeah, he was impressed. nice. Um it so that that has to get wrapped up and we hope yeah. to do that this year for sure before yeah. the end of the year. Yay. And then the feature film is is something I have been working on since probably 2011, so I'm ready to just uh Get You've over been writing my... this for a long time. Yeah, I've just yeah. had to do a lot of research it's about a uh, woman coming home from war, and mm-hmm. I'm just tired of seeing all these movies and it's only men who return. Yeah. <laughs> like, where, where are the yeah. other soldiers? You That's know, amazing. You yeah. know, so um, it's a really good story. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's for me to be in as well. So awesome. I'm just kind of excited about that. It's just about yeah. a woman who's like returning to herself through nature and the women around her. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. I just feel like a lot of women can relate to that, whether you've been to war or not, or if it's just been the the war of raising children, or just being a woman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's just about like healing yeah. and things like that. So yeah. I'm working on it's all great. that. Sorry. Anyway, that's no, all. No, I love it. <laughs> so, awesome. um, so the sharing. photography website. Did you give the address? I did. For that? It's okay. um, www.juliejonesivphotography.com, and then it's I V E. Y. E-Y, yes, right. thank you. I-V-E-Y. And you also have a Facebook page for the photography as well. I do. Yeah. It's the same, Julie Jones IV Photography. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. All right. Uh, let's see. Where, who should go next? Do, dick, do you want to go, Sarah? Yes. And tell us a little so, bit. So, Dick Pick Professional is yes. on Funny or Die Now. So, vote, go check it vote out. It. Yeah. Vote, it go, vote it funny. Vote it funny. Vote it funny. Vote it funny. Because it is. I mean, obviously. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> So Not that I star if, in it or anything. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's so. And funny. if you have seen it, go watch it again and vote and, and vote funny. it funny. And Hillary's in it. Yeah. And Sarah wrote and directed it. Yes. So good. Oh, so funny. Oh, you saw it? Oh yeah, I saw it online. Oh, like, it's hilarious. <laughs> like people come up to me and they're like, "Are you?" And I'm like, ah, "Are you the dick pic girl?" I don't do that professionally, but yeah. Please don't send me your dick pics. Please don't. Please don't do it. All right, Hillary, do you have something you would like to plug? I do. I do indeed. Um, Critical Crop Top is fundraising for our 2018 season. Uh, Yeah. And we're still fiscally sponsored, which means that all of your donations, whether in kind or monetary, are both tax deductible. And speaking of in kind donations, we have an Amazon wish list. We do. 
a so. Christmas list of sorts. Consider or that. Or whatever holiday it is you're sub- yeah, celebrating this season. Consider Hanukkah. That's our holiday whatever. list of wishes. And we would love it if you would buy us something off of our wish list and send it to us. And it's completely tax deductible if you do that. And we'll have our films on there. And as you know, yeah. if you're a fan of the show, this is, of course, our sec- the end of our second season. As you know, we frequently tell people what we're going to be doing the, the next year mm-hmm. for the films. And then we change our fucking minds whenever we want. But if you so, buy us that movie, we can't change our fucking minds. That's right. If you want to ensure that your fave movie gets done, go to the Amazon wish list, buy that movie, and we will fucking do that movie on the show. We will do it because we have <laughs> it and we own it and we can't and somebody afford bought to it buy it for anymore. us. Yeah. Um, unless it's Footloose. Unless it's Footloose, which the we've Raymond. already done. <laughs> we- no, 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 we, we have we not. Dirty Dancing. It's the same movie, you guys. It's the same movie. It's but was and Dirty Dancing are the Hillary same movie. So They're the same thing. Um, they're all the same. Where you can guys? they find that wish list? Um, they can find it on our <laughs> website at www.criticalcroptop.com slash donate. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Well, it's and actually you will see our not Amazon even at the bottom. List. It's just like right oh, there. It's just like right there. It's as right soon as you there. type it click in. On the bot- <laughs> put, click on the button that says <laughs> even our wish easier. list. It's right next no to the donate button. required. Yeah. Just www.criticalcroptop.com slash donate. And then you can just click on it. Just click on it. Just Was do that it. scratch because I have a booger? No, my nose itches. Oh, okay. I thought no, I had a booger. Okay. I've got hair in my nose. Good, good, Not good, hair good. in my nose, but hair okay. from my head that well, was technically sweeping is across hair on, my from nose. Your nose too. Yeah. It is. It's to keep the boogers. <laughs> okay, boogers. Um, so I would like <laughs> Cole, to plug. what do you have to plug? <laughs> I would like to plug uh, Vera's Workplace Sensitivity Training Series, which I believe is what we're calling it. Yeah. Probably. It seems <laughs> yeah. like it. Yeah. Anyway, it's a web four part web series um, about a woman from the 1940s so, who is giving a workplace sensitivity training seminar to a group of modern day people. And naturally, her advice is very bad. Who and it's stars in that quite series, pertinent Nicole? to the what perhaps in December will yeah. be old news by then. But uh, <laughs> all not. the workplace harassment and whatnot, it's quite pertinent to that topic um Who stars in it sarah hodges stars in it as does julie jones ivy so um <laughs> yes. and um yeah who assistant i wrote directed that well nicole. hillary <laughs> assistant directed <laughs> thank it you. Thank and you. it was and written did, and, and directed just, by nicole it was written directed me, by me um and there's a lot of other your faves in there jasmine water andy fleming, fleming christy Vosniak, christy josh Vos- cubist did josh cubist did some, and 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 riz riz uh did the uh shooting. yeah rizzle buckingham and um Let's see who else is it. Patrick Morgan is in it, and Aria oh, Mara yes. is in it. I mean, it. all these people have been guests on the podcast. Melissa Lee. Yeah. All of who these people the have been guests on the podcast. Yeah. Oh my god! You're right. Christy was the guest so for no, the Dirty didn't Dancing see episode. Everyone's faces. So all yeah. together, it, all so together in one. one. Listeners, you can see all your faves in a four part web series. It'll we'll start releasing them in January, probably like mid January, um, and uh, there'll be one a week. And uh, so come back and check that out next year in 2018 yeah. okay Bye. okay so uh that's gonna wrap it up for our show today um thank you julie for being here to discuss this thank film you for you. on the Ooh. very last episode of season two of season two of this congratulations doing- on two years thank Which is you like the very last episode ever i'm sorry to tell you guys no, no I'm i didn't know <laughs> I have i'm a- blowing this building up now <laughs> um so it is not the last episode we will see you back for season three um thank you for joining us for this if second year of this show we've had a really we'd have had a blast doing all these yeah. films this year and um want to thank everybody that's been on the show and uh, we'll see you in, well, I mean, if you're listening to the main episode right now, we'll see you for two more episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we'll see you again in 2018. Bye. Bye. Bye.